All right, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode. Top three views. We are back in this thing. Uh, we don't got much to talk about today. I'm going to be honest. Don't got much, but that's okay. That's all right. So as you can see, it's just me again, but that's all right. We will make it work. Uh, first thing we got to talk about, though, I mean, we have to talk about it, even though this isn't, you know, the sports part, right? We have top three sports, this is top three views, but since I'm not doing top three sports by myself, we got to talk about it here. We got to talk about this one because, you know, it was it was a big deal. Everyone was talking about it. It was uh, whatever, whatever. We're talking about Jake Paul, Ben Askren. I mean, I don't know. You guys let me know. What do you guys think about that fight? I last thing a lot of people saying, you know, it's rigged, this and that. Uh, you know, it, it is a little sketchy when you see Ben Askren go out like that. Just be, I mean, obviously we've seen him take beatings before. Uh, this, he didn't really take a beating. He was just kind of one punch done. And uh, I don't know. He said he was fine. Obviously, obviously, that's the thing. You got to give Jake Paul credit. Obviously, he did connect with a really good punch and dropped him. But was he out of the fight? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's tough to say. I've seen a lot of people saying rig, the ref rig, and all this stuff. I personally don't think Ben Askren was a part of this rigging thing, like, just for the money. Uh, I've seen some people saying, you know, Jay Paul probably paid Ben Askren. You know, obviously, this is the most money Ben Askren's ever made in his entire career, uh, and he's fighting Jake Paul, so that's pretty crazy. But makes sense though it's not about who's the best fighters who's this that's about who brings in money uh, and jake paul brings in money so i see people saying you know ben Askren maybe took a check right like jake paul said you this this will give me credibility if i beat someone that's actually a fighter even though he's not a boxer but he he's an, he's a he's an actual fighter a legit fighter and uh yeah it, it, it would just give me credibility and i don't necessarily agree with that I like, in the, in, in, I mean, I agree that it would give him credibility a little, a little bit. He needs to fight an actual boxer, but yeah, a little bit. But I don't think Ben Askren took the money like that. I think he really got connected uh, with a nice shot, but I think the ref just stopped it and he shouldn't have stopped it. So the ref could have been paid off. Ref could have been whatever, part of any type of like rigging it. But yeah, that was crazy. The whole card though was kind of whack. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest, honestly. Like, what was that? Well, like, what did we watch, man? Like, for one, the production pillar alone was trash. I really think the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. one was much better. Was that by Triller? I'm pretty sure that one was Triller too. And, and that one was like, that one was good. I actually like that one. That one was good. This one, though, it was just weird. I don't know. I, I just wasn't a fan of it. But to the fights, though. Yeah, the first one, right? They're fighting over a girl, which, I mean, I guess do your thing, but I'm not fighting over a girl. That's simple as that. Especially, I'm not fighting publicly over a girl. That's just, that's just weird to me. Uh, but, I mean, whatever. The, the, my issue with that fight was it was just so one-sided. The one dude didn't know how to fight, and the other dude... It seemed like he knew what he was doing for the most part, but he was just toying with them. Like, he was not even really trying, it seemed like. He was just going slow, whatever. It just wasn't interesting. The second fight we had, uh, was that Frank Mir? Yeah, I think that was Frank Mir in the, in the boxer. That one was okay. Frank Mir was just way too big. They needed a bigger guy in there because the other guy was just much faster. Uh, he had him by, like, 70, 80 pounds, and... Frank Mir was just too slow. So, yeah, that, that, that just wasn't as entertaining either. Um, and then we had these other two guys that were, I think, pretty legit boxers, but I don't know what happened with that. We had some Leonardo DiCaprio-type acting, and, I mean, props to him because the acting was good. He was borderline crying, and... Uh, yeah, for a long time. Couldn't get up. It, like, I don't know. That was crazy, man. Yeah, you guys gotta let me know too. What do you think about that? Like, that is sad. I feel like it, at that point, 
to me personally, you're just a joke for life now in that world, in the boxing world. Like I can never take you serious ever because that's just not a, like, you know, they say like the heart of a champion, right? Or something like, like you have none of that. You literally gave up, you quit. You, you were trying to win on some, or just end it on like some DQ or some, I, I don't know. I don't know, but that was whack. That was weird. That was so weird. Uh, and then we had the Jake Paul Ben Askren, and, and that one didn't last long. First round knockout. People say it was rigged. I don't know. It was definitely weird, though. Definitely some sus stuff going on. Do I think Ben Askren tried? Not really. I think he just knew Jake Paul wouldn't kill him or damage him severely. So he's willing to take it because, like I said, the most money he's ever made. So, you know. But let's see. Uh, Jake Paul's been flexing a little bit. Um, right here, Jake Paul bathes in money while boasting 75 million pay-per-view knockout. I mean, and there he is right there. Got the belt, got all this money. Even though a lot of it's ones, which is, which is interesting. I don't know if, if that's he's doing, if he did that on purpose for some subliminal stuff. I don't know, but he got hundreds in his hand. Um, yeah, 1.5 million pay per view buy, 75 million dollars generated. So, let's see what we got here. So, 24 year old is set to make millions more in box office money on top of his reported $690,000 fight purse, which is insane to me. Where is Triller getting this money? Like, that's why I don't understand. They've had so many celebrities there performing, and like, I have no idea. I have no idea. Like so many on top of on top of this. On top of I mean, I get it. If if they made 75 million just in pay-per-view buys. Um I mean, that's obviously really good. So 690,000 to Jake Paul. I mean, you know, like that leaves you in a state amount still. But yes, yeah, so this so this is crazy that he's made this much money on this fight. Um, the other thing too is that yeah I, I didn't know Jake Paul's uh, what is it his bodyguard passed away 10 days earlier so I mean that's extra motivation so once I seen that I was like oh yeah he's probably gonna win especially when I seen you know it just seems like Ben Askren care too much like I was saying um, but yeah especially when you have that like if you someone that was close to you died and he told you like you know you're gonna win and you're gonna knock him out in the first round. That's like way extra motivation. Now it's like you almost have, I feel like uh, something with you, you know, like fighting with you. And yeah, and obviously he actually did what he said. So gotta give props, you know, words do. Uh, but enough about that. I mean, I've seen that there is also other YouTubers fighting. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Ace Family guy. I don't know. I can't think of his name right now, but that guy and um, Bryce Hall. Pretty sure it's Bryce Hall. I'm not sure what Bryce Hall does. I don't know if he's a YouTuber or a TikToker. Um, but apparently they're fighting. I'm not really interested in that one too much just because I don't really know anything about either of them. I've never really, I, for one, I've never seen Bryce Hall ever seen him do his own stuff. I've only heard of him. I've never, so I don't know what he even does. And then I know the Ace family don't watch them, but I mean, I, I kind of know what they do a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really interested in that. Obviously I'm interested in the Logan Paul uh, Mayweather. I don't know if that's, I know that was uh rescheduled or they canceled it and that, but I don't know if it's official an, another official date but I'll be looking forward to that uh yeah I, I, my biggest thing with this chiller stuff is I just hope you know they kind of fix the production you know they, 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 they like they just make it more smooth and they make things feel like an event this one just felt random especially with the cameras like some of the, the camera angles and some of the I don't know it just felt like random people were 
shooting something, not like an actual company with some real production. You know what I mean? But either way, though, talk about cameras and stuff. Pentagon confirmed some UFO videos, which is exciting. I mean, for me personally, you know, I, I personally believe there's aliens and stuff like that. And this, I think this is a big deal, right? The government and stuff saying, kind of confirming, right? That videos taken by Navy is indeed a UFO. So we can check this out. So if you guys haven't seen it, you guys can get an idea. We built expedition. Definitely not gonna do that, but. Yeah, don't mind my, uh, my allergies, they're, they're crazy. But yeah, UFOs. So the Defense Department has confirmed that leaked photos and video of ident unidentified aerial phenomena, which, yeah, I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they're doing this. It's a UFO. Can we not switch the, you know, the wording here? I don't know, whatever. But how long is this thing? Anyways, taken in 2019 are indeed legitimate images of unexplained objects. Photos and videos of triangle-shaped objects blinking and moving through the clouds were taken by Navy personnel, personnel Pentagon spokeswoman Sue Go Gao, said in a statement to CNN. She also confirmed that photos of three unidentified flying objects, one sphere-shaped, another acorn-shaped, and one characterized as a metallic blimp, were also taken by Navy personnel. Wait, is this not playing when I'm not looking at it? I think it's not playing. Okay, I think, yeah, I think it wasn't playing. That is annoying. All right, so let's check this out. There's no sound. Which one's that? Is that the blimp? Until like blimp or the, is that the acorn? I mean, they're not really showing the other ones, are they? Or are they? What the heck is this? Um, what is going on? I've knocked a disc out of my bag if it hadn't been for Mr. Wilbring. What? All right, so yeah, that's it. I mean, does it really mean anything? Like... No, because again, what does all this really mean? It's just unidentified. So it just means we don't know what it is. You know, we weren't able to identify it in that moment. So that doesn't mean anything about aliens or anything, or anything you know, like that. But I mean, I did see something though where people were saying like, there it was doing some stuff that they couldn't really explain how it was doing it. So. I mean, that kind of tells you, you know, this is it's not just unidentified. It's it's also like, we don't know how it's doing this or how it's moving like this or that. So, I mean, that sounds like aliens, right? To me, it does. And, I, and I, that's the thing. I really hope we, like, in my lifetime, I'm 26. I really hope, like, we get somewhere that's so close, or at least, or, or even get to the point where of us actually knowing aliens are 100% real. We've came in contact. It's a known thing. There's proof there's, or something like that. Right. Or if, you know, if Elon Musk takes us to Mars and I don't know, maybe aliens can't, um, I don't know, maybe alien, maybe with the way, you know, earth is set up maybe aliens can't thrive here or maybe i'm at i don't know obviously i don't know but maybe in mars you know we can see more more stuff going on i would love to i would love that i would love right that now, that's because wait we'll don't, don't start playing on home. me do not start playing on me 
that is one of my like that is like one of my main things that I would want to know. That's like, you know, if you had like, if you could know one thing that's been like a secret or like a mystery, right? That is one of the main things I'd, I'd want to know for sure. It's that and it's obviously like what slash who created everything or how, did, you know, something like that. Like what is, who's the creator? Which creator is God real? Is God not real? Is this real? Is that not real? Is Whatever it is. That's probably number one, but then aliens is like number two. So I for sure would want to know that because I mean, that would just be crazy. That'd be crazy to know. It'd be crazy to find out that we legit are the only things here. There's nothing else. I think that would be crazier than finding out aliens are real. It would just be weird to like on this little planet, you know, compared to like everything, we're the only living things just on this planet. Like that'd be insane to me. And it wouldn't really make sense. Like when it like comes to at least how our brain works, that wouldn't make that, that, that like, that doesn't make any sense. If the, if, if, if there's literally millions and billions of galaxies and all that, right? And we already know how big our galaxy is. I mean, we know how big it is in the sense of just us going, us going to another planet. It's things are super far away. So imagine going past that, past that, past like like so far that it that just doesn't make any sense. I feel like each galaxy, it, minimum, has to have one living species one if we're the only one here there's another one like every galaxy you know i mean i don't know obviously i don't know but it's just, it, that, that's just some crazy stuff anyways though you know we're talking about elon musk a lot and we're talking about space what does he got live, Ian. You're out why there does this keep playing good. man we're just gonna get rid of you spacex spacex nasa pick spacex land next americans on moon which is crazy because, you know, we had Jeff Bezos with his thing. I forget what it's called, but his thing with rockets trying to do stuff. And looks like NASA is teaming with SpaceX. So let's see what this is about. NASA is getting ready to send astronauts to explore more of the moon as part of the Artemis program. And the agency has selected SpaceX to continue development of the first commercial human lander that will safely carry the next two uh, American astronauts to the lunar surface. At least one of those astronauts will make history as the first woman on the moon. That's a big deal. Another goal of the Artemis program includes landing the first person of color on the lunar surface. Another big deal. Um, the agency's powerful space launch system rocket will launch four astronauts aboard the Orion spacecraft for the multi-day journey to lunar orbit. The two crew members will transfer to SpaceX to the SpaceX human landing system, HLS, for the final leg of the journey to the surface of the moon. After approximately a week exploring the surface, they will board the lander for their short trip back to orbit, well, they, uh, where they will return to Orion and their colleagues before heading back to Earth. Look at that, though. The firm fixed price, milestone-based contract, total award value is $2.89 billion. That's insane. Um, with this award, NASA and our partners will compete, uh, complete the first crew demonstration mission to the surface of the moon in the 21st century as the agency takes a step forward for hum or for women's quality and long-term deep space exploration. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's a big deal. I don't know. Elon Musk is a goat. He's definitely a goat. <clears throat> He's somebody that, you know, you got to just respect, man, no matter what, because, and again, allergies. And every, every time you guys see a cut in this video, it's because I have to get up and deal with these allergies. But um, anyway, so yeah, you got to respect Elon Musk because he's like, I feel like the only one doing some crazy stuff consistently. Like everything he does is, is not regular, you know, it's just different. It's just goals, right? Goals and aspirations of doing some crazy stuff, going to Mars, actually colonizing you know, Mars, that's crazy. And, and he wants to do it. That's dope. So, um, yeah, Neil Musk is a crazy guy. Speaking of the moon, though, I don't know if you guys have heard about Safe Moon. 
Um, I'm not endorsing it here. I, I, all I'm saying is I know it's a, it's been a big thing. People are talking about it. Safe moon, safe moon, get it, get it. It's only a fraction of a penny. And if it gets here, it's going to this. And there's like so many benefits of getting it because the more you buy, the less there is, or it's some weird stuff like that. Like the more you buy, the less there is available. Um, I mean, obviously, the less there is, I mean, that's obviously more you buy, the less, the, uh, the less there's available. It's something like, forget, let's actually look it up. Let's let's look it up and see what it says. It's something weird with like actually, it actually like kind of promotes uh, holding it, right? All right, 100% community driven, community driven and fair launch. Um, dev. Burned all team tokens and participated in fair launch with everyone else. Every trade contributes toward automatically generating liquidity. Uh, locked inside pancake swap holders earn passive rewards through static for, uh, reflection as they watch their balance statement grow indefinitely. Okay, so. Statement employs three simple functions, reflection, LP, um, acquisition, burn in each trade. The transaction is taxed a 10% fee, which is split two ways. 5% fee redis uh, redistributed to all existing holders. 5% fee is split 50-50, half of which is sold by the contract into BNB, while the other half is of the safe moon tokens are paired automatically with the previously mentioned BNB and added as liquidity pair <clears throat> on pancake swap. So, so just by owning safe moon, you get safe moon. I mean, that's pretty cool if, if, if I would say so myself, but um, so right here, I guess, dead burn all tokens in fair launch. I'm gonna be honest, I don't understand all this 100%, but I, I do know it's something that is like, this is, is much safer for some reason uh, than going other ways because of this whole thing, this whole thing right here. It's also very complicated though, on how to even acquire a safe moon. I mean, it's not super complicated, but it's way more complicated than it is to buy anything else for some reason. And I don't know why that's the case, but it's very complicated. So I though, uh, decided, you know what? Let's give it a chance, right? Let's give it a chance. Let's, let's go to how to buy. Uh, yeah, so right here, Trust Wallet, purchase BNB or BSC, but sometimes you can't do it on Trust Wallet and then you do some other stuff, but pan, then, yeah, the pancake swap and whatever. But um, let's see what I got though. So I decided to do it because why not, right? I don't got to put that much money into it. And I don't know, you know, it's uh, why not just try it? So I currently own 13 million 725,000 safe moon. Um, yeah. So, and I got that at, uh, I don't know if it tells me, but yeah, it doesn't tell me. This is I I don't I never really use Trust Wallet, so I don't really know how this works. It might tell me somewhere else, but it's currently at 0 0.0000078. That's where it's currently at. So, like I said, it's not even close to a penny. Not even close. So it's very cheap. But I've seen a lot of people pushing this. I don't know why. Again, I don't know completely why. Like, is it legit? Legit. I don't know. Some people say it's guaranteed to be pretty legit. I don't know. So like I said, I'm not really pushing this for you guys. I'm just more so trying to keep you guys aware that if you want to do your own research, look into it, um, go ahead. It's called Safe Moon. And yeah, you can just do safemoon.net. You can look into it if you want. And if you think it's something, you know, something that you want to go into, go for it. If not, feel you because you know things are sketchy but since it's so cheap that's why i did it because it's so cheap that i did not have to put that much money into that to get that if you think about it. like i didn't put that much money into it um but yeah it's one of those things where if you're willing if like if you have money you're willing to lose 
even if it's just say 10 bucks. If, it, if you put 10 bucks in, you're getting a lot. I'm gonna tell you now, you're getting a lot. So 10 bucks, if you don't care to lose 10 bucks, why not? That's how I look at it. But not everybody has money that they're just willing to lose and I, and I get that. So um, yeah, but we gotta talk about, we gotta talk about this guy though. We gotta talk about doggy coin, doji coin, whatever you guys wanna call it. Uh, it's been going up again, man. It's been going up again right now. This, this, so this is what it's at currently live right now. 39 cents. I think the highest went up to was like 43. 42, maybe. No, 43. 43 was the highest went up to. They didn't end up dropping. You guys can see. Look at this dip right here. Dip all the way down to 31. 37. Look at that. 26. I was getting scary. 25. It's getting scary. What are we doing? Should we have sold? No, it's probably because a lot of people sold when it hit here. And when it hit here. When it hit here and people didn't sell, they're probably like, oh no. Went back up. Like, okay, I gotta sell. Gotta sell, right? But come on, man. We gotta hold this. We gotta hold we, we, we gotta get this to a dollar. We gotta just hold it. But yeah, this another thing I need, I need you guys to comment down below. Did you invest in, in, in this coin, in Doge coin, Doge coin? Did you invest in it? And if you did, are you happy with it? Or are you sad? Because maybe you sold it all. You know, maybe you owned a lot of it when it was under a penny. Maybe you owned a lot of it and you sold it when it hit, I don't know, five, eight, ten cents. And if you would have kept on it, you, you, you know, you would have had a lot, a lot of money. Let, let me know, man. Me personally, I didn't own that much. I put in like eight dollars, I think. Um, I did get under a penny. Um, one time though, I put like two dollars in, and then I put in six dollars since under I think five cents or something like that. So, um, yeah, so it's not bad for me. I didn't make a ton of money. I mean, if I mean, I, I still have it in. I'm still holding, but even if I pulled it out now, I didn't make a ton of money. But you know, it's not bad. Not bad at all. You know, free money, basically free money. Um, yeah, but let me know though, man, this has been going crazy. And also let me know about the Bitcoin. Cause look at Bitcoin at 55,000. This thing reached 63,000, which was a high, an all time high. And then it dropped to 53,000 overnight. And then it's, it went back up. Uh, it's like 55 or maybe 56. It's dropped a little bit again, but, uh, yeah, some crazy stuff. That's the, you know, the volatility, volatility, however you say that, um, of this stuff right here. Like, literally, you can go to sleep and wake up and it's 10,000 down, which is crazy. Because if you were, you know, if you got on the train late and you bought it, just say, at 55,000, and, and it went up to 63,000, you're on, and you put a lot in, you're, you know, you're thinking this is good. I just, you know, came up a lot. Then it dropped. It's a scary thing. Oh, and also, if, if you guys didn't know, or you guys are, you know, you guys aren't subscribed or anything, speaking of the crypto, uh, NFTs, all that kind of stuff, you know, all that digital stuff, we, me and Jerry, actually, not just me, but we, me and Jerry, we've done the top three shots, which is, uh, you know, us buying the NBA top shot packs, right? We've, we've done two so far. Um, the first one, the first one, few, we made a few, you know, few hundreds off of one moment. And if you guys don't know how it works, they're basically like cards. If you want to think of it like that, like trading cards, you buy a pack, a digital pack, but instead of it being an actual, like a card, you get a clip of a play in the NBA that it's happened. It could be anything. It could be a dunk. It could be just a pass. It could be a three pointer, it could literally be anything. It'd be a layup. Um, and there are serial numbers. The lower the serial number, the better, except for if you get the player's number. So if you get, uh, you know, if you get LeBron or something and you get number one, serial number one out of just say 35,000, that's obviously really, really good. But it's not the best one. It's actually the second best one. Uh, the best one is going to be his number, which is 23. So if you get 23, you have the best 
version of that clip. And if you get number one, you have the second best, and then you know it goes on on and on and on from there. But there's a lot of money in it, so a lot of people were, are spending a lot of money on this stuff. And uh, yeah, so me and Jerry have done it. We've got the first one. It was a four uh, nine dollar pack. Like I said, we made a few hundred dollars on that off the nine dollars. So we got videos on this channel. You can check it out. And then we did another one where I was actually able to get a pack uh, as well because the first one I wasn't able to get a pack, but Jerry wasn't able to get a pack on this one. So again, another one with only one pack, but we made some money, man. We like, I think quadrupled our money on what we spent. We spent like 14 bucks, 15 bucks with the, <clears throat> with a tax or whatever it is. And yeah, so it's been some crazy stuff. So we hope to be able to do more of those videos because they're fun uh, just for us. It, I mean, it's, it's just fun to do. Yeah. So for us, like we want to be able to get like, you know, a crazy pack one day, like maybe a, I don't know, $200 pack, two fifty, a thousand. There's a thousand dollar packs. Uh, but right now, obviously we can't do that. Cause that's a lot of money, even though I think we will make our money back. I, I like, I really do think we are, but that's just a tough, uh, it's a tough gamble to make when you, you might like, you, uh, you might need that thousand. Right. So it's like, do I take that chance when I actually need that thousand dollars or I don't know, but yeah, you guys can check that out, man. You guys can check that out on the channel. Um, last thing I want to talk about though, is on Tuesday, 420 actually, uh, Apple has an event. We, we haven't talked about Apple in a while. We've not talked about Apple in a while, but they have an event going on, you know, on Tuesday. Spring loaded is what it's called, and that's what they're naming it. And there's some stuff I think that's pretty much confirmed, right? That they're, that they're going to release like an uh, iPad Pro, um, and I guess Air Tags. So Apple has typically released new iPad Pro models every other year. That doesn't appear to be the case for 2021. A little more than a year since the previous models arrived. Another round of iPad Pro models is incoming. Once again, we're expecting 11 inch, 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Both could feature mini LED displays for the first time. With this technology, there's better power efficiency and increased brightness. Beyond this, and an upgraded chip, the new tablet models will be very similar to last year's Pro tablets. Then there's AirTags, first rumored, what seems like a decade ago. These tiny trackers will compete with the popular Tile series and work with Apple's Find My app. Across multiple platforms, AirTags <laughs> are expected to include an all-new U1 chip and help you keep track of things like keys, wallets, purses, and the like. So iPad Pro, I mean... I think some people saying the iPad Pro is going to be like as strong as like the new, you know, MacBook Airs, like the Mac with the M1 chip, which I don't know how true that is. Obviously, they're not going to have an M1 chip. They're going to have like whatever the the next uh, what is it, A14 or something, A15. I I, I don't know what they're on yet, uh, uh, what they're on right now, but. Yeah, and then obviously the AirTags. The AirTags have been rumored, you know, they, a lot of people thought they were going to come out last year, and they didn't. And a lot of people said Apple's going to throw an event in January. It was guaranteed January, January, January. Um, and then Samsung threw their event, like, right before in January. Um, and they came up with theirs, the Galaxy Tags. Um, and I think the new phone is also in that, in that one. Uh, but... Apple never did the event, and people were and people were saying Apple was uh, doing that to, you know, find out who's leaking information, right? We're gonna tell people or talk about an event in, in January, but not actually, but not really do an event. Just talk about it and see, you know, where these leaks are coming from. Who's gonna leak it? Who's gonna say where there's, there's an event in January when there's really not one? Um, and then people said April, and looks like April is the case. We got an April event coming. And then uh, an Apple Pencil 3, maybe that's some rumored to come, or it's definitely rumored to come, but maybe that's going to uh, you know, feature in this event. So uh, I don't really know anything much about the Apple Pencil because I don't own an Apple Pencil. Uh, let me see. Perhaps this one was ditched why at least come with more colors. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, like, what does the Apple Pencil even do, you know, that... Besides, like, if you're, like, an artist or something and, and you use it for that, but besides that, like, what actual 
capabilities does it have? Is it not just a stylus? I don't know. I, like I said, I don't have one, never used one, and I've never seen anybody use one. So I don't know what it's even for. I don't get why you would need a third generation. You know, like if you just had the second or the first, wouldn't that be more and you know more than capable of doing what you want to do with it? I get it though. It could be how smooth it is. You know how well it keeps up with you. Sometimes stuff lags behind and it it's hard to use. Obviously, maybe that could be the case. Uh, I don't know. Me personally, don't really need an Apple Pencil. I don't really see the use of it. It's same thing with like a stylus and stuff on phones. Like I get it. I actually had the very first Galaxy Note that came out when in, in high school. It was like the very first one and everyone was clowning me. Everybody was clowning me for having it, saying, why do I got a whole iPad? People going like this, walking around, like, which wasn't that serious. Every phone is probably the size of the first Galaxy Note now that I've got this iPhone. It's probably the same size or bigger than the first Note. But at the time, phones were small, obviously. So I, I just it was just funny. Like, everyone's... Anyways, though, that one had a stylus, obviously, and I used it but it just wasn't it's not it's not necessary to me like I, I don't ever need it so i don't know so that little pencil is not really a thing I, I look forward to really but ipad mini apple tv don't care about the ipad mini but i do care about the apple tv because i have the older apple tv which was like from like 2017 which is still <clears throat> it's still great it's still cool it's not, it's not it they ain't it it ain't it for 2021 so the 7.9 inch iPad mini is Apple's most overlooked tablet as it should be first introduced in 2012. The latest model was released in 2019 alongside the discontinued third generation iPad air. The 2021 iPad mini is expected to feature an 8.4 inch display in an updated processor, perhaps a 13 or a 14. Unfortunately, the fresh design found on the 2020 iPad pro and iPad air, iPad air isn't expected to carry over here. Again, iPad mini get out of here. Instead, sixth generation iPad mini owners will see uh, the familiar home button with touch ID and top and bottom bezels that give off a dated feel. A dated feel. iPad mini, get out of here. 2021 could see the arrival of the first new Apple TV since 2017. Rumored to feature 120 hertz display technology and a brand new remote. You gotta love that. I actually like the remote as far as like a design. I like the remote as far as this. Using the remote, using the remote is the issue. Looking at it, I like it. Small, slim, you know, I, I like the different textures or whatever, like on this and this. Using it is not it. It's not it, especially how easy this thing can get lost and fall in the couch. Look at this. Fall in the couch or like, it's not it, but so that's, so that's good. New remote. Hopefully, it's it's you know something better. Um, yeah, so it can arrive next week or it cannot. Um, the thing with this though, like honestly, Apple really needs to really go big with this because it's expensive. The iPad or the the Apple TV is expensive, and yes, it's it, it was stronger than you know and more powerful than everything else like the Fire Stick or the Roku and, and all this stuff. But the issue is the price and the fact that it has been updated. Uh, I mean, it's been updated, like software updates, but, you know, a, a, an actual new hardware, uh, hardware. So Roku's in, uh, what I say, uh, the Fire Stick, and all, like, I feel like those come out every year, like a new one or every other every other year or something. So they're just more fresher, right? They're like, they're just way more fresh. So this needs to be updated. I'm glad it's finally getting updated, but they need to, they need to add, they need to make it super powerful, especially with the whole Apple arcade, right? Gaming and all that kind of stuff. Like they can really, really open things up and make their, uh, their services a bigger deal, right? So they have the Apple TV plus Apple arcade, um, they have the fitness plus Apple fitness plus. I think it's something like that. They have the news Apple news plus they have the Apple one bundle. So say you don't want to use the 
or like say you don't want to pay 10 bucks for the news and you don't want to pay the five bucks or whatever it is for the Apple Arcade, but you're willing to pay that because you get a discount if you do the, the Apple bundle. So it's almost like you get one of those for free or by something like that, right? Or the Apple Fitness. And it's, it's if, if you integrate it better in, with, with the Apple TV, more people are, would be willing to pay for the bundle because it's like, why not pay for the bundle? That's the thing. Why not pay for the bundle if it's basically getting something for free, like Apple Arcade or something like that? And if you have kids um, and you could hook it up to the TV, it'll actually play everything very well because it plays some stuff, but the newer stuff, it, it struggles a little bit. And it's just, it's, it's just going to keep struggling because there's some games on there that are pretty intense where you know it needs some some power but yeah i really just want to see that i did see rumors of apple not for this one but working on you know something like their home pod mixed with apple tv i don't know I, like is that like a sound bar that like that would make sense i know amazon has those i think roku maybe has a i don't know but like a sound bar would make sense throw the sound bar there the Apple TV's in it, series in it, which makes it a home pod basically. Because it's, it's it's a speaker, so it makes it a home pod. Uh, I mean that 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 would be actually really cool because uh yeah, I mean it would just have to sound good, which I think it would, because Apple Apple's sound is typically pretty good. Um but yeah, I'm excited for the Apple TV. That's the main thing I'm excited about out of this whole event. More than iPad Pro, more than Air Tags more than ipad mini and then uh i mean new max would be cool i'm not getting one so that's why i'm not that excited about it but it would be cool because you know i'm not the biggest computer guy but jerry is and uh yeah so it'd be cool to see the new max if if you know yeah right here apple silicon base max so these are the same and they're more powerful i, I would just like to see how it compares to what they're using before with intel or whatever you know what, what, like whatever it was and, and, and whatever's like you know the thing to go to now with other stuff like how does it compare right that'd be interesting the new iphone i definitely don't think a new iphone is going to be coming um spring themed apple watch uh i mean yeah that that could that could be a thing um not likely ipad ipad air or macbook air makes sense that stuff just came out last year and then final prediction so we went out to look at that, but um, yeah, Apple event that's that's coming up, and then we'll, I'll you know we'll cover it or I'll cover it. I don't know if Jerry will be back, but I'll cover it on the on next week's episode. So yeah, I really hope that Apple TV comes out because I'll we'll be getting it. Definitely, we'll be getting it uh, if it's good, obviously, because I'm fine with the one we got now because we pretty much just use it for. Uh, for streaming and stuff, but if this one's more powerful and games are better on it, and I don't know, they ink deals with something, they have some stick games on there, I'll definitely check it out. But that's pretty much gonna be the episode, guys. Pretty much gonna be it. I don't really got much to talk about else. I tried to extend this one a little bit because, like I said, I didn't have much to talk about on this one, but I was like, this can't be 20 minutes. I have to at least extend it a little bit. So, I try to. I don't know. I don't know how long this is, but uh, yeah. If you enjoyed it, definitely would like. You know, we appreciate that. It does help us grow. It does look good in the YouTube algorithms and stuff. So if you guys can leave a like, we definitely appreciate that. And you know, if you're new here, subscribe, man. We got we got more top shots coming. We got, like I said, whether it's just me on this podcast uh, or Jerry's coming back, we definitely got the podcast going. And and yeah, so you can do that. We appreciate it. And also comment down below. You know, what what, what do you think about that Jake Paul been asking a fight? What do you think about the UFOs? You know, the Pentagon confirming some UFO stuff. What do you think about Elon Musk and SpaceX? Um, and also the crypto. What do you think about that? Let me know what you guys think about that. I'm really interested in that because it's a big topic right now. Obviously, a lot of people invested in the doggy coin, Doja coin. A lot of people are talking about Safe Moon now. A lot of people, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Let me know if you guys invest in any of that stuff or you think it's it's too risky and all that. But uh, you know, if you if you want more content from us, from me or Jerry, you can look in, down below in the description. We got links down there. 
there's a link to my film channel, which is, uh, you know, it's just reviewing movies, TV shows, reacting to trailers. Uh, yeah, there's some good stuff down there. And then uh, the vlog channel, you know, we got vlogs. That's pretty much what it is. There's a lot of food stuff, though, where we, uh, you know, either try new foods. Like, we tried Indian food for the first time, never had Indian food before. And, you know, we give ratings. We uh, talk about it. We try new, you know, items from places like Starbucks or, uh, you know, wherever, Popeye's. And there's also just, you know, re just regular vlogs, stuff like that. But, yeah, that's those. That, those are actually my channels. And then you got Jerry's channel, which is Top 3 Entertainment. Over there, he has his other podcast, um, the Why Not Me podcast. So on that, he pretty much talks to people about, you know, their career and stuff and what they do or their passions, um, whether that's YouTube, you know, kind of like what we do with this podcast, or uh, if it's owning a business, you know, if it's just uh, being an artist, you know, rapper, singer, uh, what else, who else has he had on there? He's had, yeah, owning a bar, just a lot of random, dip, like, you know, different things, so there's pretty much something for everybody on there, astrologist, there's like, yeah, like, there's a lot of good, uh, good episodes over there. And then uh, he also does the top three tech, which is reviewing tech. It's mostly computer stuff, um, GPUs and stuff like that. So I know a lot of people, you know, GPUs are a big deal. A lot of people can't get their hands on them. He's, he was able to get his hand on a few. So he does stuff where he, uh, you know, compares it, you know, playing games and all that. He compares them. There's unboxing videos. There's uh, videos of installing stuff. And yeah, so there's Top 3 Tech, there's Why Not Me Podcast, and then, there, and then there's the Top 3 Gaming, which is mostly Call of Duty, uh, I'm pretty much only Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's a few of us, I'm, I'm uh, featured in there, it's a few of us, we just play, you know, Call of Duty, and yeah, he actually live streams that, so he actually live streams that and the Why Not Me Podcast, so the Why Not Me Podcast is live, and the... Uh, the uh, Top 3 Gaming is live, so you can check that out live and comment down and all that kind of stuff, and he'll interact with you. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's us. That's our channels. You guys can, you know, go down below and uh, check us out. You can follow the socials down below. And yeah, that being said, though, my name is Matt, and I'll catch you next time, man. Peace.